going worldwide. Dirty Water. And I love that Dirty Water TV. Love that Dirty Water TV. <laughs> That dirty water TV. I really do. The best. Ow! Welcome to Dirty Water TV. I'm Sam Howe. And I'm Amanda Susie. We're at Cask and Flag in Fenway, and tonight's show it's all about Harpoon beer and why it's the best in the world. But it's also about Frozen Fenway 2017. Once again, college hockey takes over the band box at Fenway Park for a doubleheader. Game one features Boston University versus UMass followed by BC vs. PC in the nightcap. Now, that's a huge show here tonight. Here's what's on tap. Andrew Frades takes us inside Fenway for this year's Frozen Fenway 2017. We'll sample some delicious Harpoon IPA and take you into the cask and flag and kitchen for some Harpoon fish and chips. Dave Russo, Mr. Scallycap himself, headlines the Boston Scally Comedy Show at Laugh Boston. And we'll harken back to the summer and make you think of warmer times as our own Samantha Russo tours Newport, Rhode Island. But first, Andrew Frades is standing by inside Fenway Park for this year's Hockey East doubleheader. That's tonight's big ticket brought to you by Hicks Tickets. Thanks, Ben and Sam. We're here on ice level, Frozen Fenway, number eight BC versus Providence. Under the bright lights of Frozen Fenway, should be a fun one. All right, we're here with a few uh, Providence hockey fans. Uh, what do you guys think of the game so far? Um, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm. They're keeping it up. I think it's going to be a close game. Yeah, it's been a pretty good day. Not as cold as I uh, thought it was going to be. First game was pretty good, and then uh, ready for PC and BC now. What do you got for a game score? 3-2 uh, BC. What do you got for a game score? As much as I love BC, I think it's going to be a 2-1 Providence game. Hate saying it. I feel like it's going to be one of those games. BC, I'll out show, out shoot them, I'll play them, and Providence will get a lucky bounce here and there. That's an upset. It is. It is, unfortunately. But I think I think Providence beat them earlier this year. On a scale of one to freezing, how cold are you? Uh, the first game was pretty bitter, but get up, walk around, enjoy the views here. You're going to be warmed right up. You did a double header, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got to get up early. Got to dig my car out. Got to get on the tee. Made it down here. We're here with Tom Doherty, TD from Frozen Fenway. UMass just had a tough loss, 5-2 to two to BU. Uh, but still, what a, what a great experience playing at Fenway Park. What do you think it means to those boys? I think it's a great experience for the, for the kids, and it's only going to help them down the line as they continue to, to move forward in their hockey schedule. First time at Frozen Fenway. What do you think? How does Fenway Park look? Fenway Park's unreal. They set it up pretty great. It's a good time. What do you got for a game score today? Game score, I'm going to call it 2-1 to one, Providence. Okay, right on. A little bit of an upset. Yeah, my friend's on the team, so I'm rooting for him. I'm hoping he does well. It's so exciting to have Providence at Fenway Park especially, so we're really excited and we hope they win. So go Friars. <laughs> Woo, go Friars. Go Friars. It was a great day from Fenway. Fans came out and supported their teams despite the freezing cold. Now we're going to go enjoy the game. I'm Andrew Frades reporting for Dirty Water TV. That's tonight's big ticket, brought to you by Hicks Tickets. Here's what else is going on around town. Hi, I'm Higgs. So call me, get tickets, and be part of the action. From the frozen Fenway down to Newport, Rhode Island, Sam Russo takes us inside this awesome town. Tonight we are the toast of Newport, Rhode Island. Let's go check out the landing, the lobster bar, and O'Brien's Pub. The lobster bar started as a small restaurant in the back of a Quidneck Lobster Company in 2012. It soon became one of the most famous and stunningly unique bar and restaurants on the old Newport waterfront. 
we're right on the water. I don't think any other restaurant can touch our, uh, our views of the harbor. Oceanside dining, lobsters, fresh seafood, get everything right off the boats. The Lobster Bar now utilizes the old Aquidneck Lobster Company with a passion for great food and commanding the best view in Newport Harbor. You enjoy coming here? Every time I come, yes. Why? It's the atmosphere and you get to mingle with everybody. It's just a lively hot spot. The views, the sunset, I mean, the people, come on, can't beat that. The Landing Restaurant is located dockside at the end of Newport's historic Bowen's Wharf in downtown Newport, Rhode Island. With cool ocean breezes and a commanding view of Newport Harbor, the landing offers some of the best views anywhere in Newport. It's a great, great vibe. People love to come dance. We have a nightclub as well as the live music outside, so there's always something to do. Live music every day, seven days a week. Complementing these views is their menu, offering fine dining, seafood, raw bar, bar snacks, and appetizers. They got the live music, great atmosphere. Bunch of people everywhere, the food is actually phenomenal. The Landing offers various entertainment and live music throughout the year and hosts many fabulous events. Look at the fun that we're having right here tonight. We're having a couple of Heineken, a Heineken Life by Ant, a little dirty water in the back here. We're having a great time. It's a fun place to be if you're in Newport. This is where you want to be. We love the Landing and we love that Dirty Water TV. Yeah, love the Dirty Water TV. O'Brien's Pub is located in the 5th Ward District of Newport and has been operating since 1945. Their current operation was established in 1979 and has continued to be a favorite among Newport residents and tourists alike. We have such a big patio. It's great to be outside in the middle of the summer in Newport. People love it. So you guys are at O'Brien's tonight. How much fun are you having? So much, so much fun! fun. Woo! Have so many memories. Every time I come here, there's always good people, good food, good atmosphere. O'Brien's Outdoor Garden Patio Bar features alfresco dining with a fish-filled water fountain. It's really fun to come out to Newport, especially during the summer. It's sick, it's always a party, everybody's always down to hang out and do whatever. It's fun. I love that dirty water TV. Up next, we head inside the Cask and Flag and Kitchen for some harpoon fish and chips. And later, Dave Russo takes us into this year's Boston Scally Comedy Show, and that's when Dirty Water TV returns. It's Russo. I'm on the road with Tony Orlando and Bruce Springsteen. Did we dig the show tonight? Yeah, oh, yeah. fun. Hysterical. All right, you, you heard it right there. <laughs> the champs right there. I'm Russo. I'm on the road. If you want to see some great entertainment, come out and see me live at a comedy club or a venue near you. Welcome back to Dirty Water TV. I'm Amanda Susi. And I'm Sam Howe. We are here at Cask and Flagon with Harpoon Evangelist Greg Moon. Greg, how have you been staying warm today at Frozen Fenway? Oh, staying warm is pretty easy when you got a nice IPA in your hand. Yeah. yeah. So, a Harpoon IPA is one of my personal favorite beers, but why is it the favorite beer for people in Boston, America, worldwide? Uh, you know, back when I started in 1994, Harpoon IPA was a summer seasonal. Yeah. And we had an original ale that was a little bit darker in color, a little less hoppy. We took some of the color out of it, lightened it up, added more hops, Cascade hops. People responded to it. All the chefs loved it in Boston. They wanted to have it on. And that uh, fall, we had to make it year-round because it was so popular. And ever since then, it was, it's been our number one selling beer. So. Is there something that you can tell us that makes Harpoon IPA different from other IPAs, or is it a trade secret? It's not a trade secret. Basically. A lot of the modern IPAs, it's very light on the malt and it's all hop. And hop will balance a beer, but roasted malt will balance a beer as well. So what you got with Harpoon is you got some color, and that comes from the roasted malt. So just like coffee, the bitterness comes from the roast. So we got a little bit of roasted malt character to it, and then we've got the hops as well to balance what's a 5.9% ABV beer. It's a pretty sizable It does beer. the trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is one of Harpoon's probably best-selling beers, but what do you have coming out down the line? Any new, anything new that we should look forward yeah, to? Yeah, we've got some new stuff. We've been busy. We've had a lot of new stuff this past year. Our, our summer beer was uh, Camp Juana Mango. Oh, delicious. Oh, yeah, we tried that. Mango Pale Ale, delicious. Coming up, we've got a brand new sort of late winter, early seasonal called Fresh Tracks. 
which is a light, lighter colored beer than this, but it's it's hopped with Centennial hops, which is kind of a piney hop. We're just coming off our winter UFO Blonde, which is a uh, blonde UFO beer, but yep. they put cold brew coffee in it. It's kind of drinking, you know, like a donkey sized coffee. Nice. When the cold brew is done, we'll have UFO Twist, which is a blood orange and bergamot. Bergamot's this weird. Uh, yeah, I have a few candles with that scent in it. Yeah, Great. Called, if it tastes anything like it smells, then we're in for a treat. <laughs> it's called UFO Twist because it's like a twist of citrus in it. And then we've got a new, uh, our, uh, we used to do an Irish Red for St. Patrick's Day. We've got a new one for that. It's an uh, Irish IPA or a red IPA. It's called The Crack. And then we'll have a new UFO Summer this year, which is a Huckleberry. Wow. Which is like a blueberry. Wow. So we've been really busy at the brewery coming up with new flavors. And they're all going to be available to the public for a change. Usually you could only get them down at the brewery at the, the beer hall. But we're like, hey, come on. It's, come up with some good packaging and bottle it and sell it out in the, in the trade. So we're excited about that. What's awesome about Harpoon as well, though, is it goes well with a lot of foods. Actually, we had a chance to go inside the kitchen and see how the famous fish and chips are prepared using Harpoon IPA. Let's, let's check it out. Hi, guys. I'm here with Jimmy the Chef, and he's going to show us how he makes his signature Harpoon fish and chips. Let's do it, Jimmy. Well, I'm Chef Jimmy. So we we'll start frying the French fries which uh, we drop it on a 375 degrees fry oil, which I use canola oil. We use paddock as a fish, so we're gonna do the fish and chips today. Um, we use uh, eight ounces um, paddock fillet. We drop it on a beer butter, which is uh, harpoon beer butter. And you guys make that here, that sauce? So this is one of my biggest things. It's like we are like a scratch kitchen. We don't buy pretty much, like we do all the stuff in here. Um, we do all the dressings in house, soups, and everything, even barbecue. We make it our, our own. So the, none of this is frozen. You guys are buying it Nothing, from, not, from nice the market, fresh, fresh off the fresh Correct. off the, the truck. So after after you drop the fish on the beer butter, you drop it on a seasoning flour. Yep. Uh, you shake it. How really do you make well. that seasoning? What's that? So this of? seasoning pretty much is just like a bunch of seasoning: salt, black pepper, some Cajun spices. So let's just drop it on an oil. So. This one has to be at 325 degrees. 325 degrees, you just drop it in there. It'll, it'll take around, let's say, eight minutes to 10 minutes to cook down. So while the fries are working, we start working on the setup. I use green leaf as a garnish on the bottom of the plate. So we serve it with coleslaw and side of tata sauce, which is also homemade. So tata sauce and a lemon wedge. French fries are ready, and then seasoning without homemade seasoning. So what's in that seasoning? I need to know. So that's, I a, make fries. that's a secret. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's no. just a bunch of spices, nice. which is salt, pepper, garlic powder, um, onion powder, celery powder. Like I say, it's just a bunch, bunch of seasonings right there. Nice. So here you go. We put fries, and then we're ready to go with the fish. Wow, and that's ready to go. There you go. Oh my God. Fish and chip. That's awesome. One lucky customer. Up next, Dave Russo takes us to Laugh Boston for the Boston Scally Comedy Show. That's when Dirty Water TV returns. Did any of you guys have New Year's resolutions? Um, yeah, I'm going to drink more sp Spike Seltzers. <laughs> yeah, uh, to have a couple more drinks. Go out with friends uh, and uh, watch some more Patriots kicking some more ass. Make a lot of money and lose some weight. Yeah, mine's to get a job after college. Don't smoke weed. Wait, it just became legal. What do you mean? I know, but I need to relax. I want to travel more. Uh, stop drinking. <laughs> stop drinking? You got a great start. Great start. Continue drinking. Continue drinking. My New Year's resolution was to only drink three times a week. However, I already broke it. Mine was to always wear my seatbelt, because I never do. I mean, really, there we go. Uh, probably just playing more hockey, more snowboarding, and more traveling. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. 
this for weeks. Welcome back to Dirty Water TV. I'm Sam Howe. And I'm Amanda Susie. We're here at the Cask and Flagon at Fenway Park, right outside where Frozen Fenway 2017 is about to drop the puck for Game 2, BC vs. PC. Yeah, we're hanging out in here, drinking some harpoon, enjoying the hockey on the big screens. Our very own Dave Russo, though, is at the Boston Scally Comedy Show at Laugh Boston. Let's check it out. It's the Boston Scally Comedy Show. Real Boston, real funny. Let's go take a look. How many people here are from out of town? People from out of town? Not too many. Pretty much everyone here from uh, Massachusetts. Do you realize the rest of the country hates us? <laughs> they hate us. They hate us. They hate the Patriots and they hate Tom Brady. You know how many tires I have slashed in the past two years? <laughs> You're the owner of the Boston Scally Cat Company. When did the company start? We started in 2013. Yeah. So, uh, so less than four years, then. Less than four years. And you're from Waltham? From Waltham, Massachusetts, originally. Yeah, blue collar guy. Tell us how you got into this, like how you got into the hat. So just like you said, blue collar guy. I grew up in humble beginnings, and you know, my old man was wearing scally caps. So I used to steal his scally caps growing up, and I noticed something a little different about his and the ones that I make, and that, uh, you know, his kind of fit my head almost like a pancake, right? They were a little bit old school. They were big. They were floppy. I love that about them. But, uh, you know, when we started Boston Scally, I wanted something that still had that traditional flair, but with a little more modern look. So that's how Boston Scally came out. Like the fitted hats, we like the fitted. We don't want the hats like this anymore, right? I love wearing this one backwards, I, I love it. You can see my face when I do the Nero and the Scally cap. Now, uh, we come from a similar background, and we were talking about our buddies, we would bust chops on the streets hanging out. That's kind of how the little feel of the company, right? Comedy was always a part of my sure, life, sure. Uh, and I think it's part of most Bostonians' lives. Boston Scally Company, I'm Russo, we're at Laugh Boston. All right, back to some comedy, back to some comedy. And, and I realize this, I don't want to be upside down anymore. For any reason. There's simply no reason. Even if there was sex involved. You know what I mean? If I were on the off chance to meet somebody, hey, I really dig you. I'm going to take you home and turn you upside down. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, you are not. No. I'll go sideways with you, but that's as far as I'm going. Because upside down, the blood's going to rush to my head. We need that blood somewhere else. You know, throw my Reno, right? I gambled, I drank, I ate, I go to the couch. I'm like, hey, man, what else did it do? He goes, well, where'd the girl? Where'd the prostitute? I'm like, ah, I'm all set. I don't want to get stuff. It's gone to her for simple analytics. You know what I mean? I don't want to get that. He goes, ah, dude, come on, man. It's legal here. They get tested every Monday. Go, they get tested every Monday? He goes, yeah. I go, well, it's Saturday. <laughs> What a great night here at Laugh Boston. I want to thank the Boston Scally Cap Company and, of course, all the Boston comedians. I'm Russo. I'm going to go back on the road. We're out. How fitting is that? Dave Russo wearing a Boston Scally at the Boston Scally Comedy Show. Sounds like a really funny event. And I myself had the pleasure of attending another great event in Boston for Celtics player Marcus Smart at the Marcus Smart Bowl, which benefited his Young Game Changers Foundation. The Marcus Smart Bowling Bash at King's Back Bay featured a cocktail reception and silent auction followed by a celebrity bowling tournament and included some of Smart's friends, teammates, and other local celebrities. Marcus, can you tell us what inspired you to start this organization? Actually, my oldest brother, um, he was diagnosed with cancer when he was 15. Um, he dealt with it for 18 years and he lost that battle at the age of 33. And uh, he's just a big inspiration because he was more of a, a second father to me than anything. And, he just really made sure that I, I, I focused on what I need to focus on and control things I can control and, and never take anything for granted. Emceed by Comcast Sportsnet's Kyle Draper, the night included food, cocktails, a DJ, bowling, silent auction, meet and greet opportunities with some of Boston's most notable athletes and VIPs. Tell us how important it is for you to come out here and support the players. I think it's very important. Um, all of our guys do a really good job of of working hard, uh, being the best basketball players they can be, but they're also doing a really good job of getting out in the community and just trying to make a change so that people know that they care. The mission of Marcus Smart's Young Game Changer Foundation is to provide families with seriously and chronically ill children encouragement and life-changing experiences and to be a voice of motivation and empowerment to inner-city young athletes to be game changers off the court or field. 
If tonight is any indication, it looks like the Celtics are ready to make their mark on and off the court this season. Reporting for Dirty Water TV, I'm Amanda Susi. Up next, we'll wrap things up from the cast and flag in when Dirty Water TV returns. If you're low on funds, go to findmassmoney.com, claim unclaimed funds. If you do, you find yourself here with Tiffany and Carla, Amber, Francesca, and Jennifer, and Sarah. Let's not forget Elaine in the back. And find out if you're on the list of people waiting to claim your share of over $2 billion in unclaimed property. Amber, hands off while I finish. Visit findmassmoney.com or call 1-888-344-MASS and find Mass Money today. Welcome back to Dirty Water TV. I'm Sam Howe. And I'm Amanda Susie. Now it's that time of the show, Amanda. We got to say goodbye. Big thank you to Harpoon Brewery and, of course, Greg Moon. And for Caskin Flagon for hosting and all of the great Hockey East fans that came out to celebrate with us. Don't forget to check out our website, dirtywatermedia.com. And we have a saying around here, the weekend may be over. But the party never ends on, on Dirty, Dirty Water, Water TV. TV. We're not just about, hey, come down here and try this exotic beer you've never had anyplace else. We're more about come down here and drink this great beer surrounded by a lot of great people. We love having people at the brewery, both in Boston and Windsor, Vermont. They're open seven days a week, so you can come in, get on a tour, you can have a flight, sample all of our beers. Love beer. Love life. Love beer, love life.